You're watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, hot topic, mommy makeovers. With us, we have Georgia's go-to board-certified plastic surgeon, Dr. Kayla. Uh, Dr. Kayla, welcome to the program. Thank you, Randy. Thank you for having me here. I appreciate being here. Now, I know you brought a lot of photos. We'll be able to get to uh, most of those. Yep. So for people that don't know your center, you have a large center. Who's the typical patient, and what are the different procedures that you do? Sure. I mean, the typical patient... We have patients that are old, young, female, male, but you know the average patient that I prefer to do uh, within the practice are women after children. Uh, typically, women after children have a ton of issues that have happened that have changed their lives, changed the way they feel about themselves, and you know, unfortunately, children are wonderful to have, but they can do a whole lot of damaging things to your body and change your perception and the way you feel about yourself and the way you look and kind of affects your life significantly. And a lot of those women are wonderful women who are, um, who have, you know, good families and great jobs and really, you know, are, are, uh, want to kind of get back to the way they were before kids. And so that's an area that I, we focus a lot on. All right, now, uh, mommy makeover. Give yeah. us a working definition of what it is. What does it normally entail? Yeah, so mommy makeover essentially is, as I mentioned earlier, um, the joys of being a mother sometimes get overshadowed by having stretch marks and loose skin and sometimes C-section scars and breasts that have sagged a little bit and, and therefore sometimes it gets difficult to go to the beach and wear a two-piece bikini and now they're always wearing one-pieces and also when they wear their clothes things just don't fit the way they used to. They don't have the same hourglass figure that they used to have and a lot of times women start to feel a little less sexy, a little less attractive, and that affects their self-esteem and, okay. and many things. And so a mommy makeover essentially is any combination of procedures and plastic surgery to help reverse that entire feeling. Okay, uh, And most of the time that involves procedures in the breast and the abdomen, so both stomach and abdomen areas are two most common areas, but sometimes additional liposuction on hips and back and other areas as well, all become part of that. Um, so a mommy makeover essentially is kind of taking a woman back to... Like it's a more youthful yeah, body? Yeah, back to what she was like before she had children, when she was in her you know, 20s and she was young and, and, and sort of had that figure that she just can't get anymore. And that's, that's really what a mommy makeover is. And you know, as I said, there's a number of different procedures we do to get there, but ultimately the goal is to get a woman who's now a mother and who's now has a significant change in her body back to the way she used to be and back to feeling like, you know, she's back in high school. Again. Now, you're in a unique position, and we're talking about mommy makeovers today. Yes. But are women are coming in and they're telling you their insecurities. Oh, is, that, is that correct? So a, moving right into today's topic, mommy makeover, on that consult, what are you hearing? What, yeah. do, they, what do they want? Well, you know, what do what, women want, as they say? Basically, what they, it's not just women in that consult. Women and men, the husbands and the wives come into those consults. I usually okay. love it when they both come because then you can see the dynamic between the two. All know? right. Because sometimes the women are thinking one thing and the guys are thinking another, but they're both, they both want something done. They both kind of see a change. And for, for the women, typically what it is is, you know, they've, they've always been beautiful. Okay, they've been young, beautiful, attractive. They got married to their husband. Everything's been great. Now they've had these kids and they love their kids. But you know, when you have children, the breasts grow a little bit for breastfeeding. They lose the volume. They drop. They hollow out and sag here and you don't have the cleavage anymore. You know, the, the tummy stretches, you know, and you get these stretch marks. And then eventually as the child's gone, the skin's loose and hangs a little bit. Some of them get C-section scars. Kind of all that stuff makes them unbikiniable. Okay. You know? And that's the, that's the thing. A lot of, like, and it's a, kind of a made-up word. It's not a word in the dictionary. But it's a word that I've always made up in consults with people. I said, so you're now unbikiniable. And I said, that's it. I am. I can't wear a bikini anymore. Because, and I said, why can't you? Well, because I just don't feel good in it. You know, I, I, if I put a bikini on, I look at myself and I just, I just don't like it. So that's kind of... So your goal is to get them back into a bikini. That's, that's if that's a huge what they part. want. That's, yeah, that's a huge part of what most of them want. And, you know, a lot of times the husband was there in that same consult, 
And so many times the husband is saying, well, you know, I don't think it's that bad, right? But, but the woman just doesn't feel that that's the same. She doesn't feel that he's looking at her the same way. Okay. That he used to look at her, right? And so she has that. She wants to get that back. And, you know, most of the time the husbands are very supportive and they understand and they want, they want, they want their wife to feel great no matter what, you know. And sometimes, and it's sometimes the other way around, sometimes the husband is pushing it a little bit, you know. And he actually wants her to look, have a more full breasts or something. And it typically, that's what happens. But the dynamic in that relationship is very interesting. It's very fun. And again, remember I told you, plastic surgery is more interesting than regular medicine. And this is why. Because you get all this dynamic and all this kind of, interesting discussion and and there's an art to this and as i said these women they they want to go back to feeling to where they used to be to where they used to be and 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 even better than they used to be now you say when it's all done and you've done the procedure many of these women their whole lives change oh yeah huge transformations is that right yeah there's huge changes in their lives because you know they've they've now see what's in your mind becomes your reality that's all i've always believed and Really, if you, if you feel that you're not good enough because you don't look good enough for whatever reason, then you're not going to make yourself or push yourself to be good enough. And when you kind of have this surgery done and you actually feel that you look better than you even started, better than you when you were 18 or better than when you were 20, you look even better now, you know, that lets people feel like they can start their life over again actually and live a whole new life, like even better than they ever started with. And, and so they, it kind of energizes them to, to, to kind of go forward and, and do something. And I've, I've had one woman who's a, a nurse who un, unfortunately had a divorce in her life and got a little depressed and basically felt that she needed a change in her life. She needed things to be improved. So, we, you know, she, she had an overhang with her stomach. She had saggy breasts. She didn't feel attractive anymore. She's starting to go back in the dating scene, but really couldn't find that she felt good enough about herself to actually get into a real good relationship with someone. So, you know, we did a tummy tuck on her and took away that overhang and took away the stretch marks and took away the loose skin and we shaped her abdomen and gave her the ab line shadows that she's actually never had even when she was younger. Um, At the same time, we, you know, took her breasts, we did a breast lift on her and perked up the nipples so they're not sagging anymore. And... We also then did a small implant on her to give her that little cleavage. And, you know, her entire dress changed when she came back and follow up. I mean, she, she looked amazing. She had the hourglass figure. She had a you know, really tight dress on. She had beautiful cleavage. Her, her whole, her makeup, she had makeup that was beautiful. And her hair was done differently from her before, you know, uh, she was kind of frumpy before. She didn't really care about herself. Now afterwards, she cared. You know, and she looked amazing, not ju- only because of surgery, because her mind perceived herself as looking so much better after her surgery. And then with that as well, you know, her life, is, her life has changed dramatically. She's now like managing the entire medical department of, you know, that, that hospital which she's in. And she's kind of picked up on that. And, you know, she's actually now in a new relationship. Um, I don't know all the details of the relationship. So are those, those type of stories common? Yeah, actually, we see them all the time, every day, every day, every week. I mean, typically we see 20, 30 patients a day with kind of these kind of concerns and issues, and we always see these changes after surgery, and that's what makes it fun. I mean, we see people who, we see people before weddings, you know, just before weddings wanting to do surgery to kind of, again, they're going through a huge life change, and they want to make that life change better. They want to even change themselves a little bit going into it. We see that happen, and, and you know, as I said, we've seen people, I've seen people in, in, in sort of relationships that are challenged and sort of domestic abuse type relationships even, where they've kind of accepted things and after doing surgery, they felt different about themselves and they got out of that relationship and they've kind of gone on to do something bigger. And we're specifically talking about women today with mommy makeovers. Right. It, and like you pointed out, it's not for everyone, but if you don't like or hate in some cases, mm-hmm hate your body or don't like the way it looks, do something about it. Is that what you believe? Sure, definitely. I mean, look, if you don't, if there's something you don't like about your life at all, it doesn't mean you have to be plastic. You you always do something. You cut your hair. You do your makeup. The things you, every day you do things. We all do things to make our lives better. 
why not plastic surgery? Why not do those things? It's, I mean, it's really, there's, it's just an extension of what we normally do anyways. I mean, we, we've done so many. And so, as I said, there, for mommy makeovers typically, you know, what it is really is that most women after children, their bodies don't look the same. Now, the, except, there are the exceptional women who, you know, they have four kids and they don't have a stretch mark and their tummy looks amazing and their breasts look amazing and, you know, God bless those women. <laughs> They're amazing. Yeah. And, but, you know, I would say that 90% of women, that's not the case. 90% of them after children, after kind of time and age and, and weight loss that comes and goes with kid, with children as well, or sometimes not even with children, just weight loss in general, okay, um, that changes your body's appearance and you know that changes the way you perceive yourself and that changes the way you function in life and so these you know as I said I've had women I mean, I've had hundreds of women who've come in and over time you know after doing these procedures have kind of changed so many things about their lives because of it you've done hundreds of these mommy makeovers actually I've done probably thousands of uh, Probably more like five to ten thousand mommy makeovers. Five or ten thousand mommy makeovers. Yeah. Now you brought photos. Sure. Okay. So these are t we can't show breasts, but we we can show the abdomen. So right. what are we looking at? Yeah. So I mean, you've got the one here that you can see, and then if you look at this woman here, this woman was actually a nurse. Okay. And she um, basically she actually had lost some weight after her children, and she had some. Uh, still some residual weight, probably 20, 30 pounds extra, okay? And she had looseness in her tummy, and she had a little bulge she just couldn't get rid of. No matter how much she exercised and went to the gym, she just couldn't get rid of that little bulge in her tummy. And that's because the muscles are stretched apart after kids. And you can't get them together by doing exercising. They're just stretched apart. There's a gap between them. Um, you know, at the same time, she had sagging of her breasts. So what we did for her is we did a tummy tuck on her, and then later we came back and did a breast lift on her. And the tummy tuck, with the tummy tuck, we took that, we took that skin, that we lifted it up, okay? We took those muscles that were stretched apart and had a little bit of a bulge in her tummy that couldn't be corrected by exercise. We sewed those muscles back together and tightened them out. So it's like a girdle in a way? It's like an internal girdle, so it takes your muscles. When you say sewed the muscles back together, so like the six pack, yeah, it, yeah. it widens? Is yeah, that what's so this, happening? The six pack are two straight set of muscles that should go straight up and down like this, and there should be really no gap between them. What happens after kids, they stretch apart. So that instead of going straight up and down, they kind of go this way, and bulge around. And that causes that little bulge in the middle and kind of all your abdominal contents. So they get that out. little a little bump, little yeah. Pooch. So then by, by tightening those muscles back together, okay, it kind of does that, and it basically sucks everything right in. It pulls them in, and it also hourglasses them in a bit more so they get that curve on the hips a bit better. Then we take all that extra skin and fat that we lifted up, and we kind of pull it down, and everything from the belly button down goes in the garbage. And that's usually where 90 95% of their stretch marks are. Um, and sometimes that's also where their C-section scars or hysterectomy scars will be, all the, and appendix scars, all the time, they're all gone, okay? So then the leftover skin gets pulled down to cover, okay? Mm -hmm. And we close it back up and make a little hole and bring the new belly, the belly button back through. And if it's done right, as you can see with this other photo, the first patient I showed you, uh, look at that after now. Now you can see on the after, she's got those beautiful curved lines, okay? It's she's flat. Got that, it's flat. It's not. It's not flat. It's just concave. That's, that's it's sucked point. right okay, in. Right. It's, got some it's curve. sucked right in. You've got the little shadow line down the middle, the little ab line on the middle. You don't have the super six pack, but she's not a man. I want to keep her as a woman. So it's that sensual little midline ab line shadow. The two side ab line shadows are curving in. Okay, and if you imagine her now in a bikini, put a bikini, and she could be at any beach. Abdomen could be out. She looks amazing compared to her pre. Her pre mm -hmm, looks like, mm -hmm. and so there's the the phenomenal change that can happen. And with the tummy tuck, it just makes it. And that's just the tummy tuck. That's all it is. We just done a tummy tuck on her. It takes us an hour, an hour and a half. Okay, so she's back to a desk job in less than a week. You know, and she's so you know very quick, um, very low downtime. There is some pain, but very minimal. Okay, and. You know, incisions are all hidden very low, very low, and they're very thin. They're right down in the bikini lines. How much is technique involved here? 
I mean, is oh. everybody doing tummy tucks about the, close to the same way? No, technique is huge here. And, and a tummy tuck, it's and a lot of plastic surgery technique is important. So, uh, Randy, the key to a tummy tuck and doing it well is to get um, the shaping done properly, which one, the, the core foundation of a good tummy tuck is getting that muscle repair done right. And that means you really have to placate those muscles and really get them really tight together so you get that hourglass shape. And that's kind of like the frame of a house, okay? You're building the frame. And, and you know, there's many different ways that people do this, but, I, you know, I always use uh, very strong sutures that are going to hold it together until it heals, okay? And I like to really... Um, pull, as I said, pull that centrally and get that hourglass shaping. And a lot of people won't pull it as tight as I do, but I pull it very tight. The second thing that really shapes it well is um, I, very different than most, of, at least that I learned when I was in resident. Um, when I was a resident, we used to lift all the skin up completely and undermine it all. And I don't do that much anymore. I leave it attached on the side. Um, a lot because when then, then when I pull the muscles in that side skin comes right in and that's what gives you that hollowing in the side that mm -hmm. little that you're seeing in this woman that's sculpting in there because that skin is attached right into the muscle and pulling in and and it creates a bit of that midline ab shadow which again after doing thousands of these you kind of learn how to do it right by playing with it and experience. And so that's what, you know, again, creates that shadowing effect, creates that ab line shadow effect. And the added advantage to it is it also minimizes the, the loss of blood supply. Because if you lift all that skin up, you've cut off all the blood supply, the whole area of skin. Because we haven't lifted all that skin, we kept it attached, it's still getting tons of blood supply, so it heals better. And that makes the scar thinner, okay? It makes the scar heal better. It takes tension off the incision because the skin is still attached all the way here. It's not all lifted up, so it's not pulling on the scar. It's actually, the scar has very little tension this way. So we get a much better scar, we get much better shaping, much better healing, and usually a faster recovery when we do this kind of tummy tuck. So that's, that's kind of how I do it, it's a little different. Than you told me on the phone that the abdomen is one of the most important parts. Everybody looks at your abs, you said. Yeah, I mean... After you said abdomen, that, I was worried about my stomach. <laughs> yeah, well, the abdomen is the center of your body, right? And the, they're the core muscles. These abdomen muscles are core muscles. So that actually brings up a very, another very interesting thing that we discussed, is that the, um, when we do this, not only do these people look better, but they physically feel better and younger. Because now that the abdomen muscles are actually oriented properly, vertically like the way they used to be, they are much stronger. They can contract and have their full strength. They're not pulling on an angle anymore. Interesting. And that, and that takes attention off their back muscles. Because now before, their backs are compensating for the weakness of their abdominal muscles. Now their abdominal muscles are back in gear, taking the, the force they need to be taking, takes a strain off their back, improves their posture, and a good posture is very sexy. Okay, okay, it makes you look good. I mean, again, if you look at people who work out a lot and they're attractive, partly because their posture is very, very, you know, and again, a tummy tuck fixes that. So and that flat stomach, obviously. Yeah, so they feel younger. They feel, you know, they feel stronger in the core, right? They feel they can do many, many more things, and, and they are. And so those are, again, added benefits to a tummy tuck that's just so much more than just appearance. And Randy, there's another tummy tuck. There's a young girl now who's kind of 120 pounds, completely different kind of person. Okay, a lot of women say, well, you're 120 pounds. You don't need a tummy tuck. Sure you do. Even thin women have loose skin, stretch marks, little bulge they can't get rid of. And even as you can see in that photo, before, she has no ab line shadows, no definition. She has little stretch marks around the belly Looks button. like an older abdomen in that before, yeah, by and, the way. And, and it does. And in the after, you see that yeah, ab line yeah. shadow down the middle. You see the shadowing on the side. The stretch marks are gone. It's tighter. It's flatter. And see, even at 120 pounds, there's a significant difference on her before and after. Let's take a quick break. We'll come back. More of the photos. You're watching the Wellness Hour. I'm Randy Alvarez. We'll be right back. I can't believe this is in here because I don't feel it. Nowhere I be trying, I just don't feel it. I can't believe it's in there. It's amazing. And I don't have to massage it. It doesn't hurt or it just, you just pop them in and go. Yeah. <laughs> from, I would say from what I was expecting the pain to be and what it really was, was 
nothing would I expect it. Like I would do it again tomorrow if I had to, twice over. I'm a um, designer and I'm also on um, a very popular TV show. So just to be able to wear my own design and the things that I want to wear, all the backless stuff is, is, uh, is amazing. It's a different, it gives you a different confidence. You don't have to worry about, you know, how your breast looks. And you know, everyone wants that boost of confidence. Um, as far as the TV show, uh, people look at me, they, they, you don't never want to seem like you're perfect, but you just always want to be, you want to look your best. So I think it's natural, no one knows, but it's still, you know, that it, it boosts my confidence. I didn't think our confidence could get any higher, and it has gotten. So I, I feel as though any woman out there who feels as though they need that done, it doesn't have, it doesn't affect, it doesn't work, it's not about no one else, it's about how you feel as a woman and how it makes you feel, and it makes me feel amazing. You're watching The Wellness Hour, I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, mommy makeovers with board certified plastic surgeon, Dr. Kayla. Uh, and you have more photos when it comes to uh, tummy tuck. Yeah, I and mean, here's another example. This is a woman that's even larger than the first woman, so you can see she's got multiple bulges. She's got the, and you mentioned liposuction, you can see that little circle I've drawn on her hip because her hips are bulging, so we've liposuctioned her hips and done the abdomen. And you can see clearly from the side view that she's completely flat compared to her pre op Very nice. You know, again, you get women who lose a lot of weight. I mean, here's a woman who's lost almost 100 pounds post her, wow. and you see the saggy, wrinkly, loose skin. After a tummy tuck, we tighten that right up. Now, on that before, that's got to be unusual. Well, actually, it's not that unusual. It's just that you never see it because they're always covered up and hiding themselves. It's unusual for you. It's not unusual for me. I see this all the time. So you showing. get rid of that. I mean, you pull it down. Yeah. You, you, you get rid of that skin. Yeah, we get rid of that skin. And so this after, yeah, it's hard to believe that's the same same abdomen. Yeah. And, it's, and, and see, these women, it, and as I said, back into it's not just a tummy. This is We do the exact same thing on their breasts. Because okay. the breasts kind of feed into the exact same thing. And so, and as I said, again, I'll show you some more tummies. Another large one that's flattened out. Wow. Again, different sizes. Um, and you mentioned a bit about liposuction. You know, after, along with these things, thighs kind of grow sometimes after having kids. So you get the little bulge on the side of your thighs. As you can see on that pre-op, that woman has a kind of big saddle bag there. And then afterwards, we sucked it down and flattened it out. And then again, you can see them from behind in another patient big saddlebag suctioned out and flattened down to kind of give that younger looking appearance without that added weight that we get with aging. And so mm -hmm. that's where the liposuction comes in. So liposuction usually is on the hips, on the side of the thighs, the outer thighs, the saddlebag area, and then inner thighs are very common liposuction areas that go along with the tummy tuck. And finally, I just want to show you this last abdomen here. Again, you can see the excessive amount of loose skin and... It's know, like her belly button is yeah, hidden. It's, yeah, it's all hot. Yeah, it's flapped right over this. And again, big change was you take all that and pull that away. So those are, those are examples of tummy tucks. And then like the tummy tuck, we move into the breast. And the breast... So it, almost all of these that you've showed me included a breast lift? Almost all of them included a breast lift or breast augment. And that's it's important to understand why you would choose one over the other. And sometimes people do both, a breast lift and an augment. And again, the decision of what you want is, depends a lot on what you're preferences and what you want to look like. So with breast lifting or yes. breast reduction right. uh, on these mommy makeovers, lots of questions you say, a lot of fears about incisions or scarring. What right. do you do to minimize uh, that on these breast lifts? And, and what do you want women to know about this? Traditionally, we, what we used to do is we made incisions and we lifted the skin and we then used the skin to reshape the breast and sewed everything up. And the problem with that is there's a lot of tension on that skin. And that tension then causes thicker scarring. And so nowadays, well, what I do is very different. Um, I reshape the breast internally. So we do make some incisions in the skin, minimal incisions. We elevate the skin. We then actually cut and reshape the breast tissue and reshape that tissue. So the breast itself becomes more rounded, almost like an implant in a lift, okay? If you understand what happens as you age with the breasts, the volume from the top goes down and flattens out, and then they get heavier at the bottom, and the breast gets wider. So we actually do a procedure, I do a procedure that narrows the breast, okay, and makes it a bit younger, narrow, and not as wide and flat, 
Mm -hmm. It takes the lower tissue that's at the bottom hanging down now and actually pulls it up the top. So it gives you a fuller kind of cleavage up top. And then we kind of close this little cone. So it kind of narrows the base and creates more projection, which is what a younger breast is. Then we just basically lightly close the skin with very little tension so the scars heal almost almost perfectly. It's very hard to see them. And then they look amazing. And they've got this beautiful fullness in their bikini, beautiful fullness in their bras, when they wear dresses. They've got such projection now. They almost look like they've had an implant without an implant. So that's how I do my lifts. And reductions are similar. The reduction, we do the exact same thing, but we are taking some tissue out because a woman wants their breast to be a little smaller. Okay. And then obviously there's the other side of the coin where a woman wants to go bigger. And in that situation, we're actually putting an implant in. And if they want to, if they put a big enough implant, they don't have that much sagging, we can get away with just an implant and no lift. But sometimes if they have too much sagging and the implant itself is not enough, then we have to do an implant plus a lift. So really the options are lift alone, implant alone, or both. And it really depends on what they want. So when he, that's why it's very important for us to sit down in the office, plan it out, show photos, and look at, I can, show, I can show a woman what she's gonna look like right away. We can actually shape her breasts with our hands. And we actually have- Is that right? Yeah, and we have 3D imaging available too that we can actually 3D image them and show them what they're gonna look like with a lift, with an implant. These are all things that we can do in the office. Very nice, now we are out of time. Final message, yep. a woman after pregnancy, we're talking about mommy makeovers. Uh, and they've, they're worried about scarring, or they're worried about uh, downtime and things like that. What's your recommendation? What's your final message to them? They don't like their body. Yeah, my, my final message, if you don't like your body, you have to get up and do something about it. You know, you have to. And real, realistically, there's the scarring, the downtime on a surgery that's done well is very minimal. I mean, there should okay. be very minimal to no scarring. You know, you can never have zero scarring, but it's, it's so hard to see the trade-off um, from the loose skin, the stretch marks, the bulge, to having a very thin line scar, uh, and to having perfectly shaped breasts, um, it, it's just, it's not even, it's not a worry at that point once you see what it's like. Great info. They could go to your website, see these photos. Thank you for coming on the program. Yeah. Very interesting. Okay. You've been watching the Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez for now. I wish you good health. Thanks for watching the Wellness Hour. The leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.